Hey YouTubers, it's uh, Arms Citizen 76 back at you again with uh, another video here. If you've been following along with my channel, uh, you'll realize that I just said Armed Citizen 76, which it used to be Brian Big Boy 1000. I created that channel uh, a few years back, just kind of to get on YouTube and watch videos and like videos. And uh, since then, I've started creating my own uh, videos, of things that I, I'm into, which is firearms. And uh, I didn't feel that that name suit the channel anymore so I decided to change it but nonetheless it's still me and uh, moving on I'm uh, going to start this video here it's a uh, a good day I bought my first AK kind of tell you a little bit about it and uh, why I chose to get it um, first off just say reason why I chose to get an AK is because I always wanted one in my collection um, kind of an AR fanboy so I really chose those over AKs. I have over two grand on one of my ARs. Um, this AK, you know, it's a little over $500 with all the fees and whatnot. And the uh, uh, reason why I like ARs better than AKs, we're not going to really get into that, is just to say that, you know, AKs were built cheap and made to be cheap and throw away guns. They're made out of stamped steel receivers. You know, they're not milled out of any kind of metal. Um, don't get me wrong, they're still strong, sturdy, have a reputation, reliability, hold up for years, but still it's just not the platform that uh, I prefer. But I wanted one nonetheless, and I decided I was going to buy the cheapest one possible, just because most of all the AKs out there, even the real cheap ones, are really reliable, and I didn't feel the need to spend that kind of money on an AR, like buying an arsenal for you know upwards of a thousand plus dollars. I just chose to go with the cheapest one to get one of my collection. Well, when I was shopping online, I found a few websites that had AKs that I deal with, but they only had two. Uh, they had a Romanian Wasser 1063, and that was through Century Arms. And this rifle here is through Century Arms. It is a uh, Serbian Yugo M70 NPAP AK-47. I'll let you take a peek at it here. And the reason why I chose this one over the Wasser, one, it was cheaper. It was on sale for $4.99, and the Wasser, I believe, was around $5.35, $5.50. Two, on YouTube, looking at people doing review, reviews on the Wasser and the reviews on the Yugo uh, NPAP here, this one got better reviews. Not to say that the Wasser isn't worth buying, because, uh, to be honest with you, if it was a few bucks cheaper than this one, I would have bought that one. And, uh... There's a few things um, I'm going to go over in the next video because I do have my buddy's uh, Wasser 1063. He happens to have one. And I'm going to go over and do the reviews between the differences between the rifles just so you can see what the differences are. But uh, I chose this one because it's uh, got great reviews. Um, real solid, real sturdy rifle. Uh, just got it. Haven't had a chance to shoot it. And uh, I'll tell you some of the features that it does come with. So you guys that are looking to buy you an NPAP or looking at this exact rifle, um, you can kind of get a, a feel for it. One, if you're familiar with any of the AKs, you know it doesn't come with this style of a of a pistol grip on it. It comes with the regular stick style. Um, it has the finger grooves on it, USA made, kind of make it that 922R compliant. Um, the rail is a little bit different than your average AK, uh, which I'm not really quite sure why. If anybody knows, just leave the comment down below. But it still accept, accepts you know, mounts, so you can put a red dot or a scope up there. Um, the furniture is new. The gun is 100% new. Um, what else does it come with? <clears throat> this uh, furniture is a little bit different than what you find on the average AK as far as the way it mounts. And the butt stock's a little bit bigger. And the forend is a little bit longer on the wood. As you see, it has the three holes here instead of the two on your average AK. Um, it also has in the safety selector here, as you can see, there's this little notch here. Uh, when you pull your bolt hand um, all the way back, you can push up on your uh, safety here and lock your bolt in this notch and keep it locked back. It also comes with what they call a cro uh, chrome bolt carrier and um, let you know it's not chrome, it's just polished stainless, uh, which is basically what comes in every AR is just that black coated one. Well, if you were to polish that, you'd pretty much get this. That's still a plus when it comes to cleaning. Um, it comes with a chrome hammer forged barrel um, and it comes with a slant brake on it instead of just a regular old barrel nut. It does have the slant brake on it. And uh, the barrel's not chrome lined, which really doesn't concern me to be honest with you. I'd rather have it to be chrome lined. 
And the reason why I'm saying is chrome line is supposed to be a little bit more durable, <clears throat> a little bit easier to clean versus a non-chrome line that's supposed to be a little bit more accurate. But we are dealing with an AK, so three to four MOA is about what you're going to get out of any AK. I don't care how much money you spend on them. So uh, that really doesn't concern me that it's going to be more accurate. But nonetheless, uh, I'm the type of person that when I go out to the range and I have fun with my gun, when I get home I clean them immediately. And uh, so I don't really see that being an issue for me. And uh, uh, it's got the Tapco G2 trigger. Just look down, remember that, seeing that it comes with the Tapco G2 trigger as well. Um, it is uh, dimpled out, you know, to try to help you with the, the magazine wobble and play. Um, you can see it's cut nice and even. You see on a lot of guns where they're not the quality of the cut for the magwell. Because a lot of the guns were used to be single stack and they had to be converted over to double stack and they had to cut them out and they'd be uneven. You know, that's nice and straight. Um, another thing that's different with these rifles is uh, when you're going to take off your dust cover here, normally you push in on this latch here and lift up on your dust cover. On the Yugos, you kind of got this little detent button here on the side. You got to push in on it as well as push on on this to pop it up. But it actually makes it a lot easier when uh, reassembling by having this. And I really can't think of much more else that uh, little upgraded features it comes with because everything else is pretty much just, you know, your standard AK. It does have the cleaning rod. Um, does not have the bayonet lug. That is uh, kind of milled down there. As far as quality, it's real solid. Um, you do see a little bit of machining marks, you know, here on your front sight post here. You know, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you do see some machining marks on it. Um, you can vaguely see some here in the gas block as well, um, but it feels, you know, it's heavy. It's heavier than, a, you know, some of the other AKs. It comes in close to 8 pounds, unloaded. Um, you get one used military surplus, 30 rounder, and uh, that that's included in it. You know, it kind of sucks that, you know, you can tell it's used, you know, but at least you do get at least one new USA-made TAPCO uh, uh, 30 rounder with it, so, you know, that's good. Comes in a decently uh, padded box, you know. Got your safety flag and whatnot. You know, it comes with your lock, like all guns. You know, come come with the lock. Um, that's kind of it. Um, kind of get your guys' opinion here before I get off as well. Uh, a lot of guys like the standard AK in the wood furniture. I kind of like it too, and kind of feel like that's all I want to do to it. But you know how it is when you get a gun. It's kind of like Barbie dolls for men. You want to just start dropping money into it and putting upgrades on it. And you go are a little bit different than the other ARs as far as the way the buttstock fastens and the forends a little bit uh, longer. So when you do buy furniture for the Yugos, you know the end caps, any, any Yugoslavian uh, rifle, that uh, you know you're going to have to be specific when shopping for it to get the right furniture for it. And uh, and, and don't get me wrong, when you hear that, people are like, oh, no, I don't want it now. It, the furniture is out there because I'm looking at buying some, and it's not as expensive as what, you know, people say. And you always pay for what you get. And to be honest, from watching all the videos on YouTube that I've gathered and talking to people, the Yugos is one of the preferred uh, AK uh, manufacturers to get. You know, a Serbian now is where they're coming out of, which was used to be Yugoslavia, which we know they're no more of that, but... That, that's good news that those rifles are coming from there because uh, the quality control is up on it a little bit more and uh, so don't be uh, nervous when you hear that it's harder to get furniture for because uh, it is out there and it kind of get your guys' opinion would you prefer to leave the wood furniture on it and just leave it the way it is or would you put maybe a uh, M4 AR-15 uh, carbine style uh, butt stock on it or a skeleton modular stock or a side folder uh, would you think about putting like a mag pull grip on it or a palm grip and would you think about putting maybe a Hogue or a Tapco or a Midwest Industries quad rail or key mod rail or something on it and uh, uh, flashlight and vertical grip, red dot, you know, things of that nature. Is that just pushing the AK platform a little bit too much and trying to make it too tactical or will it really serve a purpose? Um, be honest with you, the buttstock, the uh, only, only drawback I see of the gun that I don't care for, which is kind of a complaint with a few other people, is uh, the buttstock. And like I said, it's a little bit bigger than what a uh, normal AK's buttstock is, so when you put your cheek to it, it's perfect if you're running optics. But if you're not running optics, for me it's a little difficult to line up my iron sights. So I always have to end up dropping down my cheek a little bit more when I shoulder it, 
you know, I'm kind of playing with it to get uh, the side picture going. So that's kind of the reason why I want to change the butt stock. But then if I'm going to change the butt stock, I want the rest of the gun to match. So then I have to move forward with the gun. And then you just end up spending money on it. And I'm not sure if that's really what I want to do with it. Um, but like I said, comment down below. Um, any opinions, leave it down too. Um, like, share, comment, subscribe, please. Um, stay tuned. Uh, I'll be getting ready to do a comparison on this rifle right here. And my buddy let me borrow his uh, Romanian Wasser 1063. I'm going to do a video after this and kind of compare the two. That way if you guys were in the same boat as I was, looking at the differences between the two rifles and weighing your options on which one's for you and which one's not and uh, which way to go, um, stick around and stay tuned because uh, that video will be right behind this one. And uh, until next time, guys, I'll see you later.